Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for Zoom and Tradewind Contact Centre webinar. So obviously a lot of talk about the new Zoom Contact Centre product. So from the Tradewind team, being myself, Sam, the uh, Partner Development Manager, uh, Francis here with me as well, as well as Cooper, we'd like to welcome you to the call. And I'd like to pass you on to the Zoom team. And uh, Chad, I'll, I'll leave it with you to introduce who's with you and then kick it all off. Great. Thank you, Sam. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, we'll get things started today. Um, so firstly, my name is Ch Chad Hardacre. I've been fortunate enough to be in the industry, you know, telephony, UC, CC, UCAS, CCAS, and who knows what other abbreviations will come. Um, but I've been in the industry now for 20 years Um started this journey in a partner practice, but for then the last sort of seven years um, held various roles at Vendorland, all really centred around developing key relationships with partners and making sure that partners get the most out of their, their vendor relationship. Um, and I really enjoy that that aspect of my role here at Zoom. Joining me on today's call is, is Yav. And Yav, over to yourself for a brief introduction, mate. Thank you, Chad and team. Um, great to see most of you uh, join the webinar. And I, I'm sure you're going to take a get a lot out of this. So um, and hopefully you can provide some, you know, feedback based on our demonstration. But about me, I've been uh, in the industry for, you know, good, I'd say, 20 years. I started off with, you know, the vendor world at Cisco and then moved my way into the partner channel space. Uh, I've got a massive passion around channel and partners, uh, as Chad has described for himself. I think that's where uh, a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of you you and the wider team can, you know, benefit in terms of contacts and especially around, you know, professional services or that MSA. Um, yeah, and I've plus, you know, um, I'm, I've been with Zoom for a good two and a half years uh, with their Zoom phone team and, you know, moved into that contact center where we built the platform from ground up. So um, I'm really excited about the whole um, program as it's always innovating and, and coming out with great ideas based on customer requirements and the direction of the uh, industry. Thank you. Yeah. And we've also got David joining us. Thanks, David. And David's going to be um, manning the questions. So feel free to um, keep uh, David busy on today's call because we're going to then get to the questions at the end. But David, did you want to do a brief introduction? Oh, just a brief introduction. Basically, yep. I'm the distribution and master agency channel manager here at Zoom. Work very closely with the Tradewinds team, obviously with uh, Sam and Francis and Tony and Cooper. And uh, yeah, really uh, pleased to be on the see the webinar today. So uh, yeah, I'll hand, hand it back to you, Chad. Thank you, David. So in today's session, we've kind of designed it to help you get a better understanding of why Zoom's entered the CX space. We're going to cover off the basics of the Zoom Connect Center offering, in particular, the new virtual agent capabilities, which we've, we've announced as GA as well. And then we're going to touch on some of the aspects in which we feel that we differentiate both our UCAS and our CCAS go-to-market because of the, the, the evolution of, of Zoom Connect Center with our go-to-market overall positioning on the platform. And we're going to provide you with a live demonstration covering off certain aspects of the, um, the solution that we feel are, are very much of interest, particularly the agent experience, the supervisor experience, and some of the admin experiences as well. And then, as I mentioned, should time, visit, ugh, should time permit, we'll also have a few um, uh, Q&As that we can wrap up with as well with David's help. So we'll get straight into it. So um, really, I want to I briefly share with you Zoom's view of the current market landscape and the trends that we're seeing in contact center, contact center as a service or CCAS, and of course, the overall customer experience of CX spaces as, as a whole. Um, those two words, customer experience, they're definitely getting a lot of airplay, right, as we all we'll can attest to and see. But CX is, a, is very much, it's a huge focus of just about all organizations, particularly post-pandemic, right? You know, businesses are continuing with digital transformation projects and initiatives, and they're doing this to react to very big changes that they've seen in consumer behaviour, but also for many organisations, changes in their general user behaviour and internal comms. So, of course, it's no surprise to then see so many organisations that are not only focusing on CX now, but they're also then now at a point of investing in technology such as CCAS because they know that's going to help them deliver on the various CX promises that they're making, right? So there's an abundance of reasons why businesses are pursuing CX. Um, and there's also, a, I suppose, a ton of positive business outcomes that can easily be derived from, from undertaking CX transformations or CX projects. Now, businesses want to take advantage of new applications, new processes, which they now realise 
can really transform their, their business approach and can really help them achieve those CX outcomes. You know, the huge focus of some of that is around the work from home commitments or flexible working commitments, because they now realize that that's something that's needed across the whole business, not just for a segment of people, but even those that are really heavily CX faced. And a driving force behind a lot of that is now CCAS and, and what that opens up in terms of the art of possible. You know, CCAS is a fundamental tool to help a lot of businesses achieve CX best practices. But interesting, more and more, we're seeing organisations, um, I suppose they're getting a greater sense of an availability and democratisation of AI or artificial intelligence. And they're seeing that of, of very much of interest when pursuing those CX transformations. And this is something that we're seeing to be visible in both small and large size organisations, whereas typically it would be very much, you know, wind the clock back even 18 months, it was more so AX is seen as something only the big organisations undertake. Now it's being seen as more available and democratised for, for small organisations. You know, traditionally, so many people have had a very strong stereotype when it came to the term call centre or contact centre. And in a lot of cases, that view was around, okay, you know, they're very specific to a, a segment of the business, such as um, post-sale activity, or even more so defined within the technical support purposes of a business. But in fact, what we're seeing is organisations are now coming to realise that it's every touch point of their business and every interaction between a customer and their business is a make or break opportunity in that relationship that they have with the customer. And of course, that's playing a role in them realizing that CX, both applications and processes around CX, but also the benefits derived from a CX project, they're no longer isolated to that small part of the business, that post-sale and that support part of the business. They're now seeing that it's got a very big role to play in start to finish in every aspect of, of people that touch their business. So here are just some of the many challenges that we're hearing from organizations that they face when they do take that, you know, scratch of the service, they take that bigger, deeper lens look at their, their CX business today, how they're delivering CX now. And, you know, a lot of these also align to some of the key objectives or the outcomes that they're hoping to achieve from undertaking a CX project. So they're not just a challenge that they're visibly seeing and know that they need to tackle, but they're also around how do we resolve that? That's some of the key, um, I suppose, benchmarks or what they're setting out as must-haves or deliverables that they want to achieve if they're going to undertake a CX project. And I'm sure we can all recognise this, not just because we engage with businesses and these customers, but also because we are consumers, right? So we know some of these pain barriers when we're dealing with businesses ourselves that we can relate to this. Now, one thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is what I like to call hidden contact centres. So, you know, we've got a lot of analysts that talk about CCAS and the total addressable market, and often those figures in that data set, it's, it's very specific to organisations that already have CC and, and they're looking at growth aspects of CC and how those changes are happening in the market. But there is a massive, absolutely massive total addressable market, which often rides under the radar when we talk about CCAS. And that's what I like to call hidden connect centres. And I'm sure we can all relate to this. And we've already seen a lot of this in our engagements with customers. You know, think about a typical customer engagement where you've probably had over the last 18 months, where you're looking at helping them go from on-prem into UCAS, and, you know, you're working collaboratively with that, that organisation, you're helping them uncover their requirements to set out, you know, how a UCAS solution will, will meet their requirements, right? And then in those discussions that you have, the customer comes up and says, oh, yeah, by the way, these are some of our key requirements. You know, we want, we need to have more structured call flows. You know, I want more flexible options around how the calls get to people within the business. You know, I want some dashboards, real-time dashboards, so I know what's happening and, you know, are people getting to the right people? Oh, I need some historical reporting because I've got stakeholders and management asking me about performance levels or are we, you know, winning and, and losing in the sense of, you know, CX engagements. And by the way, I've got this, maybe I've got this standalone web chat over here that I got one time, but, you know, it's standalone and I don't know how it relates to the rest of the part of the business. I'm sure we can all relate to some of these engagements that we've had with customers because it's coming up more and more often. So, of course, what you do is you, you say to that customer, yep, I've taken these requirements. I think you're going to be best served by having a contact centre solution because that's going to tickle those right boxes. And they're like, stop, stop, Chad. I am adamant. I am not a call centre. I'm not a contact centre. No, no, no. What you're telling me? No, I'm not a contact centre. can't have it. And you go, okay. And then they come back and double down and they repeat those same requirements. I must have flexible call routing. I need to know more about this. I need to handle my web chat better. I need reporting, reporting and analytics. You know, so then you go, okay, yeah, you're right. You're not a CC or call center. Oh, but I've got a C CX solution for you. And they're like, oh yeah, tell me more. My ears are pricked. You know, so these hidden connect centers, what I mean by that is particularly businesses who are 
outstretch their PBX or UCAS solution, and they may not already have a structured call center or contact center solution now, but they've identified that they need the benefits one will derive from that. And that you're seeing that particularly in that, that business that has maybe a total seat count of around 50 to 250, or even up to that 500 seat count, a lot more of the businesses that fit within that realm of seats for UCAS are identifying pockets and pockets of hidden contact centers within their business. So this is that massive opportunity lying in wait, particularly in the ANZ segment. So I think what we're going to see is CCAS attachment to UCAS um, opportunities is going to explode in this, this segment. And I think we're going to see that over the next three years, that there's going to be massive adoption, not just still what's to run within UCAS, but CCAS attachment into those UCAS options um, opportunities rather is going to get huge. So now, of course, we've got Zoom entering the, the CCAS space, and I want to share with you some of the details as to the why um, we're entering this space and also what we do differently to others. So as Zoom, we, we decided against making an acquisition. I know there was a lot of talk and people have, have asked me this a lot as to, yes, we've acquired into this space. No, we didn't go down the path of an acquisition. We went back to, I suppose, original plan A, and that was using a framework that was very familiar to us. And what I mean by that is we're expanding on our current proven reliable, global, and very successful platform. We're using the same methodology of expanding the platform as we did from a meetings experience to a phone experience, and now we're expanding that platform to deliver a CX experience. And what this means is that we don't have to worry about technology conflicts for integrations and migrations. We don't have to worry about legacy tech debt and all that goes with that, because that, that, that whole realm of issues you've got to deal with, that slows down both innovation and integrations, which is fundamental to be successful in CCAS. So our one platform, one application, one experience story, which is really quite strong and, and being really well received within the market, well then now that includes ZCC and the CCAS space as a whole. And it allows us to deliver a rich omni-channel, but also video optimized solution, which we're gonna to touch on uh, as well um, throughout this presentation. So. I must admit, I've been absolutely in awe at the speed of innovation that we've witnessed at Zoom over the last couple of years, and in particular, a lot of the, the speed and, and innovation that was focused around Zoom phone. But let me tell you, nothing, that is absolutely nothing compared to what we've now just witnessed for the last 12 months with Zoom Contact Centre, because we did release it in, in the North America uh, segment about a year ago now. And as you can see on the screen, that level of innovation shows you the very strong commitment that Zoom has to innovation and making sure that we're delivering. You know, where most people promise on paper, we deliver on roadmap month after month after month. And it's only going to get even more like that for the next coming year. So a couple of the key things that we like to call out around the, the Zoom Connects in the space and why we've entered it and what we're going to be doing differently. So the first one, I suppose, is to address the most common agent pain points that we've heard, right? So our priority at Zoom has been to provide a simple and seamless experience. And, and you know, and a, good, a good example of that is the dual purpose agent desktop. And this is what Yav's going to show you in the demonstration. So the agent now has one application, whether they're connecting with colleagues or customers. So we've combined UCAS and CCAS for that true rich end user experience because we know that it's not only great and a better experience for agents, but it's also great as to what that means for how they're engaging with customers and also how easy it is and frictionless it is for them to engage with back office staff. And that delivers a greater CX experience for your customers. Now, I don't know about you, but I can say firsthand that as an agent's job, it's not easy. Many businesses are challenged by the face, um, facing fact of, of sort of turnover, high turnover rates within agents. I mean, I only lasted a, a very short time in an IT help desk, but thankfully that was due to promotion and not because of delivering bad CX. So I think I'm, I passed the card there. But when the, the agent's workflow, if it's simple, if it's easy and if it improves that experience, that not only translates to better CX in delivering CX to the, to the business as a whole, but it also means it's a frictionless experience for agents. And there's, there's less of a reason for agents to look elsewhere or be frustrated within their work. And I think that's a really important aspect and what we're aiming to achieve with Zoom Contact Center. You know, also getting customers to the right point and the right area and the right person within their business, that's fundamental. We've heard that time and time again from customers. So, you know, we know the importance of that around customer satisfaction. We know the importance around what that means for retention of staff and customers and also just general loyalty. So because of this, we've made sure that we've designed Zoom Connect Center with an advanced routing engine for those interactions. But what we didn't do is we didn't make it super complex and crazy. We've tried to make it a very intuitive flow designer. And Yav will show this aspect in the demonstration for you as well. 
that's what, what we're trying to do, I suppose, with the flow designer is making it easier to design the customer journeys uh, across the full omnichannel experience, every interaction. And that's not only for partners, but also for some customers who like to get involved on that day-to-day -day changes within their, their interactions. What we've also found is businesses are interacting with customers now in, very, in, in lots of new ways. And over the last few years, they've accelerated their use of video to replace sort of in-person um, interactions. And that's continuing even post-pandemic now, where it makes sense. And research has, has also revealed to us that interactions um, are more efficient and issues are actually solved faster with video. You know, we know that video also helps provide a more personalised experience um, when you're in those remote customer uh, engagements and relationships. So, of course, leveraging our one platform, our one application and one experience approach means that video is natively built in within Zoom Connect Centre because it's part of that platform already, right? And that allows us to provide not only another channel for engagement with customers, but it also means you don't have those complexities, costs and worries about integrating a separate third-party video platform. You know, another benefit this brings is that video waiting experience. And I'm really excited by the opportunities that this brings because, you know, think about all the different ways in which you're waiting on that, that engagement and what it can do. You know, this is like the 2.0 of messages on hold, if you will. You know, it provides a, a chance to promote your business, your brand, maybe educate and inform customers depending on what segment they're looking at, whether it's a net new customer or a, a customer wanting to, you know, maybe look at an expansion or an upsell or what have you. So lots of great opportunities that this brings and, again, highlights our video-first approach. You know, there's, there's going to be a number of additional new capabilities that we deliver, but I think the most powerful that we have is that video capability provided within the platform for Zoom Connect Centre. It's really going to allow us to provide that more human-centric connection with customers. You know, and what we've seen here is, is just some of the examples. You know, we discussed earlier on about that hidden contact centre, and I think what you're going to see is a continued uh, expansion of this list of all the different use cases that we haven't even thought around yet as to where video makes really good sense and can increase the adoption of contact centre within the business space. You know, there's going to be so many different ways um, in which we're going to see video infused in these CX engagements that we haven't even thought around now particularly in retail, particularly in financial services and those more professional services engagements. So this is just a few that we're starting to see already, but I'm sure we're going to see much, much more over the next year as well. One of the things we've also realised is that supervisors can benefit by having the same experience in the same app, of course, that agents do. We know that supervisors often play a bit of an agent role and we know that it needs to be intuitive from them, right? So we wanted to make sure they had all the capabilities that they needed to clearly manage, monitor and coach and even measure, I suppose, that agent productivity as well as that Q-level um, productivity. So we've provided a comprehensive dashboard for real-time and historical reporting. We've got built-in analytics that provides very clear insights into that agent productivity, into things like call time, customer interactions, and really giving the tools to empower supervisors to solve problems or also make changes on the fly as they need to to get that high level of agent performance and customer satisfaction. You know, an ask that you hear, and you're probably already seeing it time and time again from customers is, particularly in that hidden connect centres, as we, as we discussed earlier, was really around dashboards, analytics and reporting. You're going to hear that just about in every engagement that you have with most customers now, in those, particularly in those hidden connect centres, because they're being asked by, by their own business stakeholders for it. So we aim to provide accurate, thorough and thoughtful information, but we want to make sure we can do it in a very convenient manner, both for supervisors and just management and other stakeholders within the business. And you're going to see some of this in, in Yav's demonstration as well. With businesses now, I suppose, realising that Connect Centre and CX has a role to play outside of that traditional lens of a support desk or other post-sale engagements, it now brings us the opportunity to integrate with many more business applications, right? Not just those applications that were seen in a support role. So we've started off with the three most commonly used applications, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Zendesk. And these integrations are not only available at an agent level to really harmonize that agent experience and allow them to live in that app, but also at the back end level in the flow designer that we touched on earlier. Now think about an example of where, you know, we can identify that customer automatically, generate a record, synchronize that customer data. These are just some of the things that you're gonna see with that business level integration. And of course, not forgetting the admin experience, which was always seen as a bit of a pain point within the CC and, and CX lens. Um, we wanted to make sure that we could capitalize on that single platform now for UCAS and CCAS. We already know that we get great feedback um, from customers and partners alike around the ease of management within the, the Zoom portal. So we wanted to expand that and provide that same benefit to reduce the cost, the complexity and that annoyance and frustration around management of the contact center. 
And that's what we've done within Zoom Connect Center. We've made sure that the Zoom admin portal is easy to use, easy to learn, and reducing some of those pain points and barriers within the ZCC space or the, the CC space as a whole. What we've also done, of course, is because we are leveraging that uh, same platform is we've got seamless integration with Zoom phone. And this allows us to not only provide, I suppose, that high quality of calling interaction between, between agents and, and back office staff, but it also means that, you know, calls can go from Zoom phone to Zoom contact centre and route directly to one another. Not only delivering, I suppose, the best quality call experience, but also making sure there's no incurred costs or charges, right? And then this is also very helpful in cases where maybe the call's routed from a Zoom phone auto receptionist, and then because of a certain selection they make in an IVR, it gets over into the contact centre flow. Or vice versa, an agent might then transfer the call out of the contact centre into a Zoom phone subject matter expert. And they can do that by name, by extension, by phone number. Lastly, I just want to touch on, before handing it over to Yav to do the demonstration, I just want to touch on another GA that we've made um, globally, but also in line with our GA of Zoom Connect Center in ANZ, is virtual agent. So imagine being able to talk to your customers and you know, know that you can help them with their customer engagements in solving, not resolving, but solving 50 to 60% of those inbound requests that that customer has without engaging an agent. So the clear point and differentiation I make there is we're not just looking at resolving a chat request. We're talking about solving what the customer is looking for. And that's a very different differentiated approach to most chatbots and, and, and AI-infused chat engines. They just want to talk about, yep, did the chat come in? Did we chat for a while? And then did, did they bounce and go without really working out whether they solve what their actual customer was want, wanting to do? With the studies that we've made, we've been able to um, make sure that we can deliver on 50 to 60% solving or you know making sure that that whatever that person wanted and that information was provided um, and you'll soon be able to do that using our intelligent chatbot solutions zoom virtual agent so we've done this um i suppose using the knowledge the capabilities and the talent from the solve the acquisition so this is one of only a very few uh, uh, number of actual business acquisitions that we've made and we, we've we did that with solvi now what we've done with solvi is we've then brought that in as our zoom virtual agent and it integrates seamlessly with Zoom Contact Center, right? And it allows us to not only automate those customer interactions, but it also allows us to win a footprint with the customer. And what I mean by that is Zoom Virtual Agent can be put into a standalone solution environment. So we can maybe go about looking at customer opportunities where maybe there's some time to run on their CCAS contract, or maybe they want to just start with a toe in the water into, into virtual agent experiences. We can do that with, with Zoom Virtual Agent and then maybe expand upon that footprint with the customer in going into contact center and UKs thereafter. So a great differentiated approach to, to a go to market to win a, a you know, greater wallet share from a customer that may have otherwise been, been off limits or may not be ready for UKAS or CKAS yet. Um, so we're gonna see a bit more of this in the demonstration. I'm gonna now hand over to Yav, who's gonna provide you with some of the insights as we mentioned for, for some of the, the elements that we've touched on for our unique go to market and, and a differentiation around the product and really cover off that sort of customer agent, supervisor, and admin experience. So with that, I'll let me put my sharing of the screen. Awesome. And yeah, I'll hand it over to you. That was that was awesome, Chad, as always, very detailed. You could see, team, um, you know, that we are, as Zoom, not only providing that video meetings capability that we're all known for, but, you know, we've got that phone capability and, of course, the customer experience contact center. And that's where I was going to be demonstrating um, today's uh, scenario. So my focus is going to be on the FSI uh, industry, my demonstration. So that's more of a, you know, uh, a customer going through a journey through either a phone call um, or through a website or a mobile app that uh, that the that they can be in contact with either the bot or a subject matter expert live personnel to assist with that. Team, as we're all familiar and what Chad had also described earlier, the beauty of Zoom is a single app. Single app, and it's got the features for UCAS and CCAS um, service that will assist on your requirements. On, the, on my demonstration, I've got two clients, and I've got a third client that's running, and that's going to be more of my back office user, where I was going to show you that real seamless experience of, you know, that ability to be able to search, check that user status, and then uh, their present status, and then be able to transfer that call. On the left, I've got a supervisor here. And then on the right, I've got my agent. You can see here, I've got the options of configured all the licenses. So I've got my phone icon in case I want my telephony capability. Uh, and then we've got the great 
option here to do contact center. So from a supervisor perspective, I'll log in and I'll get a visibility here of this information. So you'll see your engagements of active completed. So active meaning any of those four channels we currently support, which is voice, video, SMS, and um, live chat. We then have that information presented. Plus we have a nice list of completed uh, engagements. So engagements of any of those channels that have come through in the history of the deployment, that you can be able to get that data and then understand around that call and get a cool, good history and event of that data. You can see here, we've also got teams, so we can be able to view my teams of all the agents in that are assigned to my, my team or queues, and then be able to kind of understand where they are, what they're doing, what skills they're assigned to, I can also opt in and out of those queues. What's also great is I've got the ability to put them into ready or not ready or have them to end their work session. We've got an address book, a nice address book that we can uh, import. Um, and there's a you know there's some sort of limitations or whatever that may look like, but we also have that ability where Chad has described that we can have the integrations we service now, Zendesk, Salesforce, and then we've got likes of Dynamics and other ones that are coming up. So you can then pull that address book through that CRM in here. We've got inbox. So there may be an option for voicemails that are being left. These could be sent as an email attachment uh, or they'd be available under the inbox depending on who's got access to which queues, voicemails, et cetera. Then of course, we've got the nice analytics that provides you that, you know, that real time and historical um, data that you know in any contact center you need or, or you when you go and invest in one you want that kind of uh, availability in terms of the out of box reports to measure those KPIs or SLAs you know abandoned calls agent occupancies um, and information around that channels in terms of how you know, many calls have come in or, or been um, you know wherever they needed to go I'll touch in more as as we go on when we move into the reporting aspect of it. But then here you've got the active engagements that are handled. Uh, then what's been in a wrap up mode um, that you need to attend or and the um, channels that have been uh, completed or those engagements. You can see when I log in, I can go into a not ready immediately or into a ready and then opt in or out of those call queues that I need to be in. So that's a supervisor. So all this information here on the left side can all be set up based on roles and permissions of what the agent or supervisor or that hybrid user that needs to you know blend between a agent and supervisor can um, have those settings going at a granular level if needed. Now that was from a supervisor perspective. I'll go into the contact center agent here when my agent logs in for the first time. They'll be able to start the session. So so one great thing about Zoom here is if you set yourself to do not disturb here that you still be able to receive contacts in a call. So that do not disturb would apply for more of your phone or your meetings, whereas the contact center will be only separately. And that comes back down to your end and start work session. You can see that I've got this configured at the moment, whereas the supervisor had a bit more information. I've just got completed engagements of myself only. What I'll be doing now, team, is I'll be just basically moving here to an active agent from a supervisor perspective to monitor that data, and I'll make an inbound phone call for now. Then I'll go and have another sort of engagement to demonstrate the platform elevation. I'm just making a call now, inbound, from one of my phones. Thank you for calling Demo Banking. Please press. I'm pressing one for the IVR press. option. And I've got a specific skill set that's been assigned to my, my agent where they can handle, you know, bank loans. And if the uh, if it's, you know, based on the language, et cetera, I can then skill that based on that agent's competency or, um, you know, what, that, that level of skill set that they need to handle those calls, which I will show you further in the portal when we get to that part. You can see that if I click on here as an as a supervisor, I see a live call in the queue. From an agent perspective, I will then go set myself into a ready state. 
the call will be delivered to the agent, telling that the caller is Yav Sabs on this extension. That's match my address book. And I have the ob ability to decline accept. I'll click on accept. Once I've accepted, the contact center call controls will be available. And in this case, I'll get some information around that caller. What's also great is out of the box, we provide that kind of CRM light where we can then you know, add that contact if it's a new person coming in on a number or edit that contact. And then we can add certain locations, account numbers and company information. So I don't have to spell it out, but what we're trying to do here team is use our CRM light. Sometimes you may not want to invest in those you know, those service nows or Zendesk, so there's a, there's a cost against it. We can provide that capability and we have the ability to do that, you know, that screen popper information to be presented to the agent when they're coming. So that's pretty handy. I'll cancel out of that. While I've got the call um, up and running, I've got the capabilities of holding the call. The call can be 100% recorded depending on what those requirements are, or we can have the ability to do a pause and resume for PCI reasons. We can also elevate that to a video call if needed. So you can, if there was, you can then send that information via an email address. Or what's better is we can also send that as an SMS with the link so that, you know, that the user can just join through the mobile app or the desktop web, web browser if they wish through using the SMS capability. I'll go back to my active call. See how I'm just moving around and it's simply just all in one place of all my channels. I could then transfer this call to a possible back office user. So what's great about it is we can define search based on queues within the contact center or your Zoom phone. So your telephony UCAS platform that you have. You could do a search on all contacts, address books, etc., or even better flows. So depending on the call flows that you have, you might want to transfer it to a in dial number on a, a separate call flow because the call may have not come in through that path. So what I can do here is I've got a back office subject matter expert. I'll bring him up. You can see he's in a ready state, but if I just set myself to maybe do, do not disturb and take him away here, I could then do search for SME. You can see that back office user. So we can then be able to just simply, you know, on his extension or direct number that he may have assigned. I could then have the option of doing a direct or a warm transfer to that user if needed. So what I'm demonstrating here, team, is that seamless experience of knowing um, that, you know, we don't have to go and set up separate platforms. They're all aren't working and interoperating within the Zooms, SBC and SIP zones. So in this case, if I go back to my Zoom phone user or someone that a user does not have contact center. If I was to go and do a team chat, I could see that the agent that I want to speak to is on a call, which is a contact center call, and they're occupied. So we got both by directional um, presence status. Um, so it's really handy. If I go back here, back to my call, I would then be able to click on engagements here on the right tab, be able to see where the call has come from and who's answered it. I'll be even able to add notes needed some assistance on um, loan rates for a car. I could publish that information and that is no, uh, added within the um, contact that's come in, which is the customer. So I can always refer back to that uh, engagement and be able to see the notes that was added along with the call recordings and any other details that are available. What's also a great team is with our Zoom contact center, out of the box, we've got the ability to see that engagement event from start to finish, as I described earlier. You can see which call that they're coming, which options that they've chosen, and you know which agent it's come, even to a level of <laughs> putting the customer on mute. So you've got a full, you know, uh, cool, full history of that event if needed. What's what's great from a supervisory perspective, I could then go into that call and utilize my, you know, my training and monitoring of the calls. So I can listen in, whisper or barge into that conversation. And this applies to both your video and your live chat.
engagements that you can go in, barge in and, and take over those calls. From an agent perspective, they've got the analytics here that we can also see only themselves or how many calls that they've handled. Uh, if they need to see their teams, there's an option to have that configurable if there's a requirement for that. So yeah, I'm all just moving around and it's all in one place. Um, the adoption rate is quite zero to none on this, on the con contact center, similar to the platform around meetings, phone, and our Zoom room platform. I could then end this call. I can then provide a disposition code. I've already added my notes. I can click on that disposition code and then that information's all reported in the back end as a historical data if I need to go back to that. If I want to go back to that engagement, I can go to my completed engagements, do a search based on the customer or a number, but on my address book, and then I could see that there was a phone call that's come in and I'll be able to adjust those um, those columns depending on what I need to see out of it. Once I've clicked into that, I can go back and I'll, as I stated earlier, I can see a whole recording of that and the notes for that call along with that entire event. And that's all out of the box with a single license skewed to have that capability. So what I'll do now, team, is I will, once I've, com I've now completed the voice engagement, I will now move to a, a a scenario where we have the customer coming through the website or through the application through on the mobile app in terms of having engagement with the likes of our virtual Zoom agent, which is our AR bot, and then allow us to elevate that to a video call. Here is a website that I've put together, a mock-up of a financial services scenario. I've put the supervisor in the back there just so I can show you the customer engagement and the agent or end user experience. You can see that we can go on the website, search around, and we have our little engagement or chat now or contact us that may pop up at any part of the website or it could be statically assigned where that it may be. Once I clicked on contact us, if I was a user, uh, someone that's looking for some loan rates, I have the four channels I can engage with, or, you know, depends, these are all configurable options, but these are demonstrating our four channels that we can engage on. What I'm gonna demonstrate is our Zoom virtual agent. Just, just with my website, you can see that I'm contacting a bot. It's connecting with the virtual agent AI bot, which is, it's always self-learning. So these, all these intents and information that we kind of give it, it kind of grows and develops itself based on if I'm an existing customer coming back in, it'll ask and say, you know, what's the inquiry about? Is it this now about loan rates, etc.? So we can, you know, you can build that uh, that, that flow depending on that customer's requirement. So what I really want to do is get some loan rates around this. So just choose an option or I could type. Then the bot will then ask me, you know, have you, you know, checked this, you know, this information here around loan, home loan rates or the website. In, as a customer, I, I would say, you know, I need some more information because I don't feel I'm getting the, the, the support that that AI bot can provide me to resolve my issue or my requirement then the bot will then offer me you know would you like to speak to an expert so in this case i could say yeah i would like to speak to an agent then here the bot will ask me can i get you more help sure i say yes so now what the bot's doing now that he tried to resolve my inquiry via a self-service ai chatbot but it seems like I need to now hand that off to a live agent. Now from a live agent, it's in the queue waiting for me to be answered. So if I just move that here from a supervisor perspective, I could then click on messaging and I could see there's an inbound web chat waiting to be answered. I'll move my browser that way, go back to my client, put myself into a ready state. 
and then you can see that <clears throat> the chat the live chat is now the ai bot has now sent that to a live agent that's available and skilled based on that competency or skills that we define in the workflow allow to best match the right agent subject matter expert you could then do a preview of that seeing the history of that before you enter it you can decline it or accept it so what i can do in this case i've accepted it and it will put myself into a available state because i can still receive inbound calls if i needed to you can see customer advocate has joined i have that same engagement that i did in my voice but i can put that aside here what we can do team is you know we can share files send some emojis so if there's some files that i want to share some documents etc we can share that information what's great is you can release this back into the queue because it's coming to the wrong call queue i mean to the into the wrong chat queue or what we can do is transfer that this engagement to a maybe more skilled or my supervisor or subject matter expert that can handle that inquiry what's even great is i can even you know elevate that to a video call these are this is once again a configurable option but depending on that use case so as an agent how can i help you having a chat conversation um I would like to show you Chad's face. Just as just some amusement or example of where I'm going with this, and the agent will go sure. Now there is that's like an abandoned in interaction coming up. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. So what we'll do then is I will then simply click on this upgrade to video. And what's great about this team is there was a question raised by by Mac around SDKs. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're doing is we've got that SDK embedded within our contact center and you just simply, you know, join video call and that customer or user does not have to have the Zoom client operating. It's all embedded within the SDK of the contact center. So now you can see I'm joining via video or an audio call. We can call it audio as well. So you can actually, you know, stop your video and have an audio call that way and once again this information so will then start to be recorded in a video conversation so like we do with voice calls our um, video will be also recorded for compliance purposes so i'll choose my tanberg video i'll continue i will start my video here on the agent so there's going to be two yabs Showing up. Cool. Now, from here, I could still carry on and have my chat conversation. Or what's great is, as an agent, I might want to, you know, pause or stop that recording depending on that confidential confidential information. Or what I can do once again is transfer that this engagement to someone while it's live video, or I can add participants in to that conversation that needs to be there for whatever purposes. And we have the ability to call out to bring people that may be in there, such as my solicitor or lawyer to be on that call. So that scenario can apply. We can even hold that meeting just like you're holding a call. And then you can unhold that. Once it's unhold, the video should commence. Can you hear me, T? Yeah, cool. Yep. So once I've done that, what's great is I, I might say I want to share my screen. So I could then click on the share screen option. Just making sure. The hold and on hold didn't want to play well with me. So, um, but yeah, once I've got the the sharing option, I could then let me just yeah. So 
once I share the screen, I'll, I'll be able to get the option to share and then sh share on, you know, document where that may be. And then you can annotate and then do the remote control capability if there's that use case or requirement that you may need. So once that information or, or that engagement is finished, I could then end the video call from an agent perspective. A survey can be sent to the customer to complete if needed, but then you can go back and define your disposition codes. So add some notes around that, publish that note, and then that engagement's completed. So really what we're showing here, team, is that the ability of Zoom and its platform in order to have any of those channels, um, you know, be able to engage with your customer um, wherever that use case of vertical or industry is, um, and then use utilize our SDKs to achieve that. So once that's completed team, I can then minimize that. And then if I need to, I can always, once again, go back to my engagements to, you know, understand what that video call was, um, if that, if I needed to from a supervisor or an agent perspective. I'll now show you the backend team or on how this was all set up. Um, and then we'll have question uh, Q&A to assist. So I'll go and now bring that up. So with the Zoom portal team, um, what, it's single pane of glass, so you don't need to go and launch a separate application or a browser for the contact center aspect. As, as long as you've been a, a licensed with a user, then you can then, depending on your role and permissions, you'll be able to see um, information around that contact center tab. So you can see I've got my my you know my my user management, my rooms, workspace, phone system, AI management for the Zoom virtual agent, and the contact center. Once you've got that information, all here is where you can configure most most of all that information that was outlined in the demonstration from an agent supervisor perspective. You could choose a user here. And with, once you add that user or, or existing users, you could then go in and provide some information around those roles. So you can define those roles that you may want to use and assign that to the user. Once again, we do SSO and SAML mapping. So in the case you don't want to go and add them manually, you want them to come through, yes, then you can have that via a SAML mapping if required. You can do all the assignments of the queues and skills here. And that will then allow you to just walk away and let the contact center do it, what it's designed to do and route that engagement to the best match person. We can go into roles just to highlight around that. The supervisor banking, you can see, you know, I can view and edit certain things on the portal um, and what the view or reports that can be defined. As I demonstrated earlier around the agent, I, I, I can, I won't be able to see active engagements, but I'll be able to see closed. And then once again, I can. And, and yeah, I've just been just doing a quick time check and seeing, making sure we've got um, some time left for Q&A. Maybe um, finishing off on the floors. Yeah, great, great idea. I think we'll cover that. So once I go into. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Chad. So with, with the flow editor team, you can see all those engagements that we've, we've handled for our banking uh, sector or financial services. You can go in through them. But really what I want, want, want to show is more of the banking voice. So it will open up a visual flow editor, we call it. And here is where you kind of define that flow, that, you know, that kind of, you know, how do I ensure that my, that customer gets match to my right agent. This is where you can define your hours of operation, audio files. You can even do certain things like, um, you know, put your system into an emergency or a team meeting mode via just, a, you know, a set of variables or even calling in and defining an option one or option two or zero to activate, deactivate certain things. Um, I might have that use case where I need to kind of play an audio file what you could do is seamlessly based on the roles. Once again, that supervisor can simply drag and drop an event. So I might want to just get that, send the audio here from a start entry point to that, add that text to speech. Uh, we are experiencing high. 
once you've done that, you could then, you know, upload or upload or do text to speech, save that, and then next caller that comes in will play that audio message and then flow through. Here we can define, you know, inputs, press one for English or two for, you know, whatever language options or depending on your requirements, and just simply drag, drag those connectors to the path and then eventually you're going to get it delivered to a, you know, a, a call queue where there's a skill set that's been defined for that agent. We also provide the ability out of the box with expected wait times, positioning queue, and providing the caller the option to leave a voicemail or callback functionality. Callback is part of our, uh, a courtesy callback is part of our platform. So this is something that, you know, can be an interest for your requirements. Excellent. My la yeah, yeah that's yeah. all I wanted to show. Oh, yeah, well, the last part was the yeah, queues was yeah. for the queues configuration. So once again, if you're familiar familiar with Zoom Phone, we've got that similar concept where you can go into the Zoom Phone and depending on what you want, you might want to add certain audio files to be played at certain times, um, and then offer that option for callback or voicemail if needed. What's also great is you can do a service level alert notifications. To find your queue availability, business hours, holidays. Uh, you don't have to do a set. You can do, I mean, you don't have to do a set date. You can do a, a, a wide range. And then depending on where your storage location is, you can define those as well. Um, that's just a high level team around that aspect of it. And then, we, of course, we've got the, the power of the reporting um, that will give you that analytics that you may need. The one that I really want to touch on is more on the, 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 the wallboards that you get out of the box, which is, you know, I believe it's state of the art versus what we've, you know, come across in the, in the industry. So if I was to go to wallboards here, I could then get a nice view depending on those that requirement. It can all be adjusted from the supervisor perspective, but you can get some nice granular information around the agents who are available. Um, give some you know profile pics in there, um, and you know see what their occupancies are. Also, who's what or doing what within your environment. And the great part of that is, is you can send it to a digital signage or Zoom room platform uh, within Zoom to provide that data. Okay. And finally, the last part, Chad, is more around that agent utilization for a report for those workforce planners to really see, you know, how our agents are performing and where we need to, you know, put more um, bums on seats etc so you got that out of the box with our reporting capability so yeah that's yeah. that's the uh, zoom contacts and the team i hope you're all excited yeah and get, get yes and obviously a lot to get through within a short period of time so i appreciate um getting it as, as much as we can crammed in there you have um very, very much appreciate so let me just uh take back the screens and we'll just finish off um shortly guys um uh, just make sure i can see that oops don't mind me while I get my screen sorted. Um, hopefully, um, you've all found that to be very helpful in, in the sense of, um, you know, some of the stuff Yav was covering covering off. Um, more so around, you know, the, the look and feel, right? A lot of what um, we've seen in the contact center space is around the look and feel and making sure that um, a lot of those pain points are covered off. And obviously, we're not going to get through a full demonstration today, but hopefully we've covered off some of the unique uh, value props and differentiators. A um, couple of key things around next steps. So obviously, we already have our Zoom contact center training uh, from a sales and technical sales mat available. So if you're interested to learn more and get a bit of a deeper dive when I go to market, that's available now in the Zoom partner um, portal you know, under learning. So you can go and have a look at that. And then also, we've got a couple of ways in which you can win with Zoom. So um, there's a $50 gift card for the first four who share Phil's, um, he's the head of CX in, in APAC for us. He's done a blog, a really cool blog around the Zoom Connect and a launch in, in ANZ. Um, so for the first four that uh, share his blog, there's a $50 gift card up, up for grabs with trade wins. And then also those um, people that go in and take and pass the Zoom sales accreditation, um, let the team at Trade Wins know and the first three receive a $100 gift card as well. So a nice little um, win there for, for partners and um, post the webinar. And then, of course, for all things Zoom at Tradebins, you've got your contact in Sam, as we mentioned earlier in today's call, um, who's your, your number one go-to uh, around all things Zoom, whether it be around, you know, partnering with Zoom, whether it be around, you know, going through and getting the accreditations and looking at making sure you've got access to Partner Portal and engaging the wider teams at Zoom as well. So anything uh, Zoom-related, absolutely get in touch with Sam, and Sam has hooks into all of us at, at Zoom to, to get the right response for partners as well. So with that, I know we've... Um, uh, 
probably gone a little bit over time, but we've still got some time left to have a look at some of the Q&A. We've sort of been um, getting through most, as we've seen, I think, David. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Chad, look, thanks for, firstly, thanks, Chad and Yab, for the covering off the uh, content there. Really appreciate it. Great to see it. In terms of questions, you've answered a couple on the fly, which is great. So thank you for yep. that. We did have one from Brendan. Brendan wanted to ask you, Chad, uh, yes. where do I find the ANZ price points? Yeah, so we haven't, um, unlike Zoom Phone and some of the other, like Zoom One licensing, we haven't gone and publicly put it out there on, on websites. But um, as a general sense, and we're not sort of publicly broadcasting it even within partners, but on a per opportunity basis is how we're priced, pricing it at the moment. But as a rough idea for everyone, the, the list price for an agent license is um, around the 70 USD mark as a list price um, for our agent licensing. Um, that as the key thing that Yav has pointed out is, um, one of the things that we've done with our connect center pricing is very much simplified that, right? So we don't want to have it as a massive a la carte thing. It's like, here's the agent licenses and all these things are included. All of these capabilities are included as an agent. So the pricing model that we've taken as ZCC is very simplified. Um, apart from the agent license, it's really just a license, uh, sorry, a, a cost then for a sort of um, inbound cool charge plan, um, depending upon the use and, case. And, and call recording and recording and, space. Yeah, if you want additional... And, and I guess the kind of a follow up to that is in terms of working with Zoom on contact center opportunities. Um, if the you know if the agent doesn't have that kind of experience, you know what do they do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the good thing there is, um, you know, we've not only democratised the approach that we're taking to, to, to contact center or CCAS, but we've also made sure as part of our partner programs that you don't have to be a contact center expert. So, you know, the key thing that we find with a lot of our, our current wins that we've seen within ZCC is you don't have to be a proven client center deployer that's going out deploying solutions now. If you are, great. But if you're not, you can still uncover a lot of these opportunities, particularly those hidden contact centers, right? So it's more around the partner's ability to discover opportunities. And that's where the more that they can engage with Zoom, both within the training aspect, the sales training, but also engaging with the likes of, of Sam and others through, through Zoom, um, they'll very quickly be able to identify those sorts of opportunities in the market and in particular align to where Zoom has some unique differentiation um, for where Zoom can offer a, a wonderful UCAS, DCAS solution combined. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you don't have to have that experience at all. And just a couple more that I'm going to try and squeeze these in. But yeah. um, in terms of early, when you started, you talked about innovation. And uh, I, I know that there's some good information, good kind of release notes that we've got on that. So, look, mm -hmm. we'll make sure that those are followed up after the call. We're, those will come out through Sam and the team out to partners. Um, the other one I, kind of question I had there, um, Chad, was kind of um, Zoom's contact center approach. How does that differ, particularly from kind of Microsoft and what they're doing? Yeah, good point. I mean, I, I think in a nutshell, the key difference is you know, if we can put it into a, sum it up in a, in a paragraph, is that we've done it within our current platform. We haven't looked to try and do a very disparate, bolted on, cobbled together solution. Even within the Solvi acquisition, which is now Zoom Virtual Agent, we've been very thoughtful about making sure that it's within the same Zoom platform, the same admin portal, the same user experience. Um, so I think the attention to detail that Zoom has when it looks at innovation and it looks at its products is really around making sure that every customer has that it just works experience. We know that was what was successful with neat, with meetings. We know that was what's successful to get us well past 4 million seats so quickly with Zoom phone. We feel that's going to be the, the recipe of success with, with Contact Center as well as democratizing it, taking advantage of that wonderful Zoom experience from an end user and management perspective, and really tackling that CCAS space in that manner. Okay. Well, look, thanks ever so much, uh, gents. I'm going to pass it over to Sam now to just close things off. Uh, Sam, over to you. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, for attending the call this morning. Uh, bolstering what uh, Tad mentioned about if you have any questions or you want to find out more or you have, want to do a further deep dive, let me know, and I'll set up some one-on-one -on -one time with Chad and yourself just so then you can ask specific questions in terms of your needs and what you think your customers will be interested in. But outside of that, thank you everyone for and, attending. Oops, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Just no. a couple of questions that I've just noticed I didn't quite answer correctly. So is Zoom Connect in a totally Zoom built with third party? It's totally Zoom built. Absolutely. Sorry if I didn't make that clear earlier. We didn't decide to do that acquisition. We built it ground up within our, um, our core stack. We wanted to make sure we could capitalize on all those wonderful benefits that people already had from that Zoom meetings experience, which then be evolved into the Zoom phone experience. Again, not an acquisition. And Zoom Connection has been built that way. 
the acquisition we did make was to get a quick start uh, move ahead in the AI space. That AI space. We acquired yeah. a company called Solvi, but that already has been um, built within the Zoom platform and under that same Zoom umbrella experience. So we've very made uh, we've made sure that we've very much looked at that in that Zoom lens. And the other thing was, um, yeah, just quickly for those that can stay on on the call, our Salesforce integrations at an agent level or our CRM integrations at an agent level, that is where, you know, unlike a lot of others who sort of, you know, have multiple apps going together, the agent experience can be within that CRM platform. Maybe just briefly elaborate um, for the team just a bit on that experience that agents have when they do want to use that Salesforce or that Zendesk experience. Yeah, great, great one. Yeah, so what we do is... We phase one, we have voice channel only. So what, what we do is we embed the Zoom contact center SDK or the widget in within the Salesforce service now Zendesk. So that plays just a seamless part where we provide that core control of capability of providing a wrap up disposition code, not ready, ready codes. All that information that I showed on the Zoom client, that experience is embedded within Salesforce. And you don't have to have the Zoom client running unless there's a requirement for that piece. But then we're going to support the ability for uh, SMS, uh, chat, and other channels aligned with Salesforce Zendesk service now and Dynamics, which is roadmap for next quarter. So I hope that answers it. But if you want to deep dive more around that, how those integrations look like, more than happy to schedule that one to one or look at it with trade wins to do that. Sorry for interrupting there, Sam. Yep, I think we've covered off all the the questions that I can see now. So I don't. don't think all good. All right, Sam. Fantastic. Any further questions? partners direct them towards me and i'll get them answered for you but other than that have a great rest of the day and um thank you the zoom team for joining us today thanks everyone for coming thank you team appreciate your time See you guys bye thanks